Hello friends, welcome to the Vietnam War. One more time. This documentary lecture is intended to be quick and really answer just one question. Why were so many people of color opposed to the Vietnam War? The reasons are nearly endless, so we're only going to focus on a few. But remember, this is part two of two videos on Vietnam. The first video tackles why were so many Americans against the war. This brief lecture focuses on American people of color, especially Chicano pro-peace movements. Many didn't want the American war in Vietnam. So let's find out why. So, why were Chicanos and Chicanas and many people of color in favor of peace and opposed to the Vietnam War? Number one, racism. Good old fashioned American racism. Where the racism runs hundreds of years deep from sea to shining sea. And it's not only the violence or the beatings, the arrests, the water hoses, the lynchings, the dog attacks, and the extra police attention we get. It's also the centuries of structural racism where the ruling race has orchestrated generational roadblocks to the American dream for people of color, such as stopping voting, then restricting voting for people of color throughout this great country. That means people of color don't have real democracy or the benefits of equal representation for most of the 20th century. It's not as perfect as it is now where everything's perfect. And this also means that racism set up roadblocks to jobs, education, housing, healthcare, dentistry, optometry, trees in the community, green spaces, home ownership, and many, 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 many more that we don't have the time to talk about here. And here is some more special treatment by LA peace officers against Chicano high school kids who wanted a better education in 1968. This was the solution or part of it. Now why risk your lives overseas? Why risk it if you face racism and fascism by government entities at home? But imagine being drafted to war and finding out that U.S. racism is just as strong in Vietnam. That's freaking messed up. Imagine being expected to die to protect these American racist ideals. Because in America, white preachers are teaching their congregation that heaven is segregated. And the people of color need to be buried in a colored cemetery because they weren't allowed in a white cemetery. There's a white heaven, there's a black heaven. And this is how deep racism runs. Again, would you be willing to risk your life to protect this system? No, thank you. Hell no, we won't go. And many people of color fought the same way. Now this led to a ground swallowing of pro-peace movement from people of color who of course saw the hypocrisy of the U.S. fighting overseas for freedom and democracy when people of color back home faced real structural, social, and economic racism. Why should they risk their lives? Why should you? And Mexican Americans saw the hypocrisy as well. It's normal not to want to die for someone who has built a system against you. Forget that. Don't feed the genocidal machine. Best of all, chalec on a draft. Now the black community was particularly vocal and prominent during the civil rights era. They also have a unique history in this country. Again, I don't want to spend too much time describing the racism blacks encountered. There's too many centuries of examples. But let's just say blacks have dealt with a lot of racist BS, even in the 1960s. And look at this strong lady. Damn, she seems pretty convincing. And I would believe her. And many people believed her as well. So many felt, why should I die for a country that oppresses me? And why should I kill Vietnamese if they never did anything to me or never threatened me? No Vietnamese 
ever called me the N-word. Now that became a popular testimony and slogan. And it made a lot of sense to black youths. It made a lot of sense to black people and to black youths. Now perhaps the most vocal, the most eloquent, the best looking, and the most famous African American against Americans killing and dying in Vietnam was the great world champion boxer Muhammad Ali, also known as Cassius Clay. Now let's listen to one of his most famous comments about not wanting to kill Vietnamese 10,000 miles from his home who never did anything to him. I'm not gonna help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm gonna die, I'll die now, right here fighting you. You my enemy. My enemy is the white people, not Viet Cong or Chinese or Japanese. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. Now this brings us to another reason why Chicanos were against the Vietnam War. Number two, the concept of not only humanity, but biology. The idea as the Vietnamese, as our brothers and sisters. So let's not kill our brothers or sisters. Now let's be quick, but remember, humans first arrived in the Americas about 15 to 30,000 years ago, and probably a lot longer. And through a combination of walking and waterway transportation, the first Americans migrated through areas like the Bering Straits from Eastern Asia to North America. So in a nutshell, who are ancient Mexicans? Ancient Mexicans arrived from Asia in a genetic sense, from Eastern Asia, East modern day Russia, perhaps the new Northern Japan, but first Americans arrived from Asia. That's home. So again, although the first Americans probably arrived from a bunch of different places, Chicanos have roots in Asia, and our ancestral DNA roots as first Americans lie in Asia. As such, we figure that since uh, Chicanos came down through the Bering Strait, were part, or, and that honky, what's his name, Cortez, came across over and raped our women, so we're half Mongoloid and half um, Kakasoid. The, that makes the Viet Cong our brothers. This quote is attributed to David Sanchez, David Sanchez, the founder of the Brown Berets. And let's see what he's talking about. I mean, we can see these ancestral roots in the first peoples even today. Up to 90% of this Chippewa DNA can be traced back to the first wave of Americans. And we can see the ancestral roots in this young contemporary Mayan. And in this 3,000 year old Omic mask. So if the Vietnamese are our ancestor of brothers and sisters, why should we travel 10,000 miles to kill them if they are fighting for independence and freedom? Number three, so why were people of color opposed to the Vietnam War? Unfair draft process. Now most people think that there was a draft lottery that forced people to go fight in Vietnam, and that's true. There used to be, just like the one that you see on the screen. A draft seems fair, right? But before the draft lottery, the country used draft boards unfair draft boards and they function exactly as they sound draft boards were often made of well-established society members nearly all men nearly all white and generally volunteers and veterans their job was to pick young men to serve and often die in the vietnam war in order to meet government quotas and that means they had enormous power these draft boards decided on who stayed home and who went to war. They issued deferments, but for only certain people to stay at home during the war. And guess who these powerful white people chose to go fight and die 10,000 miles away in Vietnam, more than other people. You guessed it, poor people and people of color. Only 1.3% of all draft boards had black people as members. Only 1.3%. This is in October of 1966. By comparison, African Americans were 11% of the US population. 
and were 23% of all combat troops in Vietnam in 1967. Only one state in America, which was Delaware, had an equal representation of draft board members in proportion to the population, wrote Paul Murray in 1971. And 23 states had no black representation at all, zero. And how many Mexican-Americans sat on Vietnam era draft boards? Zero, nada, not one Chicano sat on any draft boards in the United States. Not one. This was completely unfair. And Mexicans had nearly no voice on other government bodies, such as school boards, city councils, or in this case, draft boards. They couldn't get equitable education, medical, um, bone spurs to, of deferment that could have saved their lives. But who did get those deferments? Whose lives were saved? Many rich white people. Uh, John Wayne, who played a war hero on countless war movies, including Vietnam, dodged the draft during World War II. Dick Cheney, one of the most famous war hawks during the, uh, the Bush administration, and par partially responsible for the longest war in U.S. history, avoided the Vietnam War when he received five deferments. Mitt Romney, the offshore millionaire GOP presidential candidate, received a deferment on, on religious grounds. Trump dodged the Vietnam War draft five times with bone spurs and educational deferments. Rudy Giuliani received multiple deferments and privately asked a federal judge who he worked for to petition the draft board for him, which he did. Rush Limbaugh also received a deferment to avoid the Vietnam War and many, many, many more got out of the war as well. So let's talk about why Chicanos didn't get deferments from the Vietnam War besides the obvious racism. Let's especially talk about the lack of educational deferment. Mexican Americans were tracked away from education and fast tracked into vocational training. Other factors such as racism resulted in Spanish speakers pushed out of public education. So much so that Spanish speakers were only 14.4% of elementary school students in California, only 7.5% of community colleges, only 2.9% of Cal State, and a pathetic 0.7% of the University of California students, according to Zaragoza um, Vargas. In fact, 75% of Mexican-American students dropped out before finishing high school. 75% dropped out. At UCLA, it was even worse in 1970 with only uh, 26,000 students. There was only about 710 Chicano students. In 65, there was only 40 Chicano students that were raza. All right, here we go. Number four. Why were Chicanos and Chicanas against the Vietnam War? Because we were being killed at rates much higher than any other racial or ethnic group. From 1961 to 67, Mexicans were some 19.4% of the war dead, but only 13.8% of the Southwest population. By 1970, when Nixon was president, 22% of all U.S. casualties in Nam were Chicanos, when we were only 5% of the total U.S. population. I'm not a math major, but that's not right. Chicanos were underrepresented in draft boards, politics, education, but overrepresented in being drafted and being killed in Vietnam. Chicanos were 19.4% of all casualties from the Army, Air Force, Marines, and Navy between 69 and 77. I'm sorry, between January 69 and February 67. And this only accounted for the five southwestern United States, according to the Secretary of Defense. In 1966, 62.5% of all Vietnam casualties from the people living in San Antonio were Chicanos, but Mexicanos only accounted for 41% of the city's population. Something's not right here. And Chicano deaths were excessive. 
Now here you see only a handful of the brave men and women who served and died in Nam. In fact, Chicanos were drafted so often and served so proudly that our place in Vietnam history is cemented. The Chicanos were in Vietnam from the start to the finish. Most Chicanos served in combat units that suffered high battlefield casualties. Okay, here we go. The first American pilot shot down in Vietnam during the 1964 Gulf of Tonkin affair was Chicano Ike. He was a navy he was a navy pilot, Ike. Mexican American Lieutenant, Lieutenant Everett Alvarez de Salinas, California served very proudly. He spent about eight and a half years as a prisoner of war, which is one of the longest captures in military history. Now here's Alvarez being paraded by North Vietnamese in 1966, and the onlookers watching this parade were yelling at him, Alvarez, Alvarez, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Here's Juan Jose Valdez. He was a U.S. Marine Sergeant at the U.S. Embassy when Saigon collapsed in 75. This is when the crap really hit the fan and the war was over. And I mean over, over. And it was, this scene was made famous in these amazing images that you're seeing now. I know people are making references to current day Afghanistan, but this is at the end. And on the last chopper, on the roof of the U.S. Embassy in Saigon, he actually left on Valdez behind. The soldiers eventually dragged them in the chopper before they took off. So Juan Jose Valdez became the last official U.S. soldier in Vietnam. The last! You see, the Chicanos were the first and the last persons in the Vietnam War. And that's what's up. Okay, finally, last answer. Here we go. Why were Chicanos against the Vietnam War? Five, the state and federal government were very hostile to the biggest symbol, the biggest Chicana and Chicano cause of the 60s, and what was really the heart and soul of the entire Chicano civil rights movement. Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huertas and the People's United Farm Workers Association, which started as the National Farm Workers in 1965 changed their name in 66, the UFW. The great UFW strike was unden undeniably the glue of the Chicano, the Chicana movement of the 1960s. When on September 1st, I'm sorry, September 16th, 1965, the National Farm Workers declared a strike against the giant agribusinesses of California. Now, they fought for a litany of problems, including unsafe work conditions, union representation, the erasure of poisonous sprays, and a living wage, and many, many, many more. But the Republican governor of California, former actor and cigarette endorser Ronald Reagan, was against the farm workers' strike. He called their union efforts immoral. He attacked his people of color in the press. He called agriculture uni unionizing illegitimate and their efforts to strike blackmail. He called this freaking blackmail against the giant agribusiness of California that collect welfare from the state. He linked Mexican workers to communism. He called these Mexican workers illegal and immoral. This was the Reagan leadership. Senator George Murphy, like Reagan, was an old Hollywood union man turned conservative, termed the UFW movement as dishonest. Now, this brought protests by many Chicanos against the Republican Party at the time. And in fact, Reagan was so anti UFW, as you can see here in this photo, during one press event, Reagan took out some grapes and started eating them in defiance of the striking workers. At the national level, the Nixon administration was just as anti-UFW and anti-labor. Richard Nixon was a longtime opponent of farm working 
organizing, specifically in California. In 1950, he helped author a, author a congressional study which declared that farm workers should be excluded from national labor relations, which they were. And that's part of the reason why these hard workers are, were, were treated like crap. Nixon had a traditional G GOP economic standpoint. Give money to the rich and it will trickle down to the poor. In this case, give money to the corporations and the money will trickle down to the workers. This is their trickle down economic stance. He was a vocal opponent against the UFW. Now Nixon was so anti uh, United Farm Workers, he also labeled the grape strike illegal, which it wasn't of course, and actively worked against them. He ordered the Department of Defense to increase their purchase of grapes for troops in Vietnam. And from 1968 to 69, which is the height of the strike, the DOD nearly quadrupled from 500,000 to 2.1 million pounds of grapes on the order of Nixon. They increased their grapes purchases. Haters going to hate. And that brings us to the end of this documentary lecture. Why Chicanos and people of color were opposed to the Vietnam War. Remember, there are more reasons that we didn't talk about here. More reasons why people of color were opposed to the war. And those answers can be seen in the first lecture, which is amazing, by the way. So very quickly, I'm going to list them here, super quickly. Why else would people of color oppose the Vietnam War? Number one, they wanted to save American lives. More than 58,000 Americans were killed. Number two, to stop the horrible treatment of the, of the Vietnamese. Number three, they wanted to stop the use of toxic defoliants like Agent Orange. Number four, to stop the incredible damage by in bombings I'm sorry to stop the incredible damage to civilians by US bombing number five the high freaking cost of this war by 68 it was calling 66 million dollars every day and number six because of the many lies that the United States government told about the war <sighs> all right that's it we are done now for sure uh, go learn about the greatest anti-Vietnam War protest by an ethnic group, the Chicano Moratorium of 1970, 30,000 marchers march, and 1,500 LAPD sheriffs and uh, LAPD and sheriffs came to ruin the party. But that's for another lecture. We are done. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Fight the power. Um, stay in school. Fight the power. All right. I'll see everybody later.